Hi guys, this is Katie Bunshoten, the founder and CEO of Certum Solutions here out of North Carolina. And today we're going to go through a question we get a lot. How do you do automatic payments or recurring charges in QuickBooks Online and go ahead and have those charges processed? as part of the form. A lot of people, funny enough, do not realize you can do this, but if you know what the amount is of your charge every month, it can be accomplished easily using our recurring transactions feature. Okay, for today's video, I'm using QuickBooks Online Advanced. I'm using our demo company here. And if you don't have a payments account, please make sure you reach out to us because it comes with some benefits as you know if you're a client of ours you're always going to get some cool benefits also if you don't have quickbooks online yet and you want to look for uh, set up quickbooks online you want a neat 50 percent off discount go ahead and pick the link in our description here and you can go ahead and go straight to the quickbooks website from there and it will apply a special discount for you Okay, so that all being said, all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started, okay? So the first thing I did while I was sitting here talking is I went ahead and clicked on the gear in the top right. That brings up a lot of our, our the back end of our system, okay? We're then going to pick up or, or choose recurring transactions. All right, this isn't just going to list sales receipts, this is gonna list everything, okay? We're going to pick new in the top right, and we're going to pick transaction type. You guessed it, sales receipt. Now, for those that don't know, there is a difference between a sales receipt and an invoice, okay? If you're issuing a document and you don't plan to be paid immediately, you plan to be paid in the future, whether that's tomorrow or down the road, um, you'll wanna pick an invoice. Similarly, if you're, doing certain kinds of transactions and it's on a specialized report, make sure that if you're trying to capture all incoming funds, you're picking sales receipt and invoice on those memorized reports. Okay, um, but back to our original point, if you're trying to process payments and you're doing this form um, right now, like I'm, it's almost like a point of sale. I'm issuing that you owe me money and you're paying me while I'm doing this form. That is a sales receipt. It totally skips accounts receivable. It goes straight to your income. Okay. Okay. So we went ahead and hit new. We picked sales receipt. We came in here and I'm going to give this a title of auto charge. And we're going to ask it to be scheduled. You can also say unscheduled. So if it's something where you're like, okay, I don't want it to go automatically. I want to open it up and save it. You could pick unscheduled, but for today, we're making things easy. We're creating, we're asking it to be scheduled. I'm also picking create one day in advance. And I'm going to ask it to automatically send the email so that my customer gets a receipt when this charge is processed, okay? For my customer, I'm just going to pick ABC Supply. And for the email, I'm putting in my demo email account here, okay, khbdemo at gmail.com. Our intervals can be daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. You can pick whichever day you want. Um, and then I'm going to just choose the first day of every month. You're going to have to pick a date in the future. So I'm going to pick September 1st and I'm going to ask it to never end. If you have something that's time-based, such as a one-year contract where you're getting payments every month, you want to make sure that this end date is set, okay? Otherwise, it could keep going after your contract has expired. But if you don't have a need for it to end, you can go ahead and pick none. These down here, a lot of these are some custom fields I've set up. If you have multiple locations, you'd want to select that here. And then down here on the payment method is where it gets interesting, okay? I'm picking credit card. If you have Intuit payments enabled, and I hope you do, and I hope you got it from us because it comes with some great benefits, right? Then you'll want to go ahead and pick Visa, MasterCard, whatever it is, because there will be payment methods that are linked to your payments account. Then you'll want to go ahead and put in a reference number if that exists and where you want this to be deposited. Okay, service date is optional. That's another field I just have set up here. We're going to pick a generic description. 
I'm just picking sales. Obviously, you know, you may want to be more granular than that. And I'm going to say this is for a dollar. But of course, you want to pick whatever amount is, is what you're looking for as well. You can pick the class that you need. You can have, so QuickBooks Online auto, automatically calculates your sales taxes uh, in most cases. So you'll want to go ahead and do that. If there is a copy of the contract or anything that backs up this transaction, known as source documents, you want to go ahead and attach those down in the bottom left as well. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and we're going to save this template. Now, if you had this set up with a QuickBooks payments account that you got through us, that would then run every single month until you asked it to stop. You wouldn't have to do anything. The only thing you'd see is a copy of the sales receipt and an email saying, congratulations, you're getting money. Obviously, that's great. That's what we like, right? So today's uh, session is over. If you have questions, make sure to post it in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and if you don't have QuickBooks Online and you saw this video and you went, oh my gosh, I've got to have it, I'm putting in a 50% discount link in the description of this video and I hope you use it. Give us a call. Let us know you need some help. We love meeting new people and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you so much. Talk to you later.